Every time you talk biometrics, there's some integrity involved here because if you store your fingerprint somewhere, you're not quite sure how it's going to be used. Uh, the idea with Match on Cut is quite the opposite. You're not leaving your fingerprint anywhere, and every time you use your fingerprint to prove your identity, that fingerprint will stay on the card and you carry it in your pocket. And should you lose the card, nobody can use it because it's only, it requires your finger. If you process your information outside of the card, then the card becomes dependent on the security of the outside system. If we do, like precise biometrics, the fingerprint matching inside of the smart card, you would have to attack the smart card in itself, which is, at the moment, technically an impossibility to achieve. You can lower your security requirements on all the outside terminal, infrastructure, communication methods. All these things become non-critical to security. Well, there, there's several values combined with biometrics. The most obvious one, of course, is to get away with PIN codes. I've got 15 PIN codes that I write down uh, because I can't remember them. Um, so solving the PIN code issue is a big personal difference to, to, to the user. And the PIN code administration is a huge cost. So there's a saving for the, uh, for the administration of, of the cardholder also. The next one is throughput, that in many situations, the throughput and the pace with which you can uh, complete a process using biometrics is faster than a PIN code or using paper. Everybody knows that lines are piling up in, in airports. You can fast track people through the airport faster using biometrics. That provides genuine value. Uh, so again, biometrics add value in different ways in different segments. The advantage for the end user, which in this case is, is the card holder, the man on the street with his ID card with his biometric credentials on it, is that it will save him time. It will make it easier for him to do um, e-government services, for example, collect uh, social security funds, to pay taxes, to go to a hospital and identify himself. I think the technology is part of uh, a lot of people's everyday life already, but we will definitely see this becoming more and more commonly used. For example, in travel situations, in Scandinavia we use it for checking in and boarding uh, airplanes to remove the use of boarding pass and use your fingerprint instead. Today it's being used on the smart ID cards of Thailand, where 12 million people have been issued today. 64 million people will be issued within a couple of years. Uh, they will be using it every time they uh, enter a social security, minister of interior, police station or other official function and demand to do an operation which demands their identity. It is being used by the people in Portugal on their new ID card. It's being used in Qatar. It's being used daily by officials working for uh, the EU government or for the Department of State of the US in order to log on to their computers. In order to supply to an organization like the Department of State in the US, any technology like ours has to pass the test of TIPS 140-2. Our technology has successfully passed this test. We work through partnerships, um, global partnerships with smart card partners, uh, system integrators and solution providers that add our solutions to their complete solutions for ID cards, etc. So with the governments, with the corporates uh, and the uh, end user groups that we're interested in. The technology can be fitted onto basically any smart card. It can be used with any type of reader in any application. So in that sense, it makes this investment very cost effective for a customer that decides to purchase a solution. Well, it's, it's, it's very interesting with biometrics became, because it came from a security point of view and it has turned into a lot of other things than that. It's, it's now uh, tied into convenience. It's, 
tied into illiteracy, it's tied into politics. And we can see, well, all on, a, on a monthly basis, we hear new ways of using biometrics from uh, gaming consoles where you can, using your, your finger to lock your profile in a gaming device, to uh, vending machines, to cash ATM machines. We see it in, uh, in areas where perhaps only one person is allowed to use a piece of equipment. So in, in types of areas where it hasn't been seen before, uh, we now see our technology being built in. To many people, this is already everyday life. It's not deployed all over the world yet, but it will within the next two to three years.